Welcome, citizens of the galaxy. Today we're going to be talking about our favorite character from Star Wars The Force Awakens, Rey. And we're drinking some yerba mate. And we're joined by our lovely co-host guest, Emily. So here we go! J.J. Abrams got a lot of press for saying something about The Force Awakens. I'm gonna hash this quote, but basically that Star Wars is for girls now. And I, I saw that quote in the context of the backlash it received, right? Because obviously Star Wars has I always got about it. been yeah. has always been for girls. I mean, we've been fans since we were quite young, all of us. Um, we found something to love in the first movies. Having a story that is written with women fans in mind is different from having to find the thing to latch on to, mm -hmm. right? To identify with the single female character <laughs> that does anything in the entire series. Who, honestly, I didn't even identify with her. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm here for Han Solo, yeah. we're good, because I think as women we have to be so used to find identifying with any of the characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. it isn't that we don't criticize the lack of female representation in the early Star Wars movies, of course, obviously we do. There are three speaking roles. But that wasn't a barrier to us being fans of it. Yeah. But there is this very real way in which Star Wars was not for girls before. That That's true. And now this part of it very much is. There's been a conscious effort to include women and people of color. We love Rey. She's the best. She's just everything that we as young fans of this franchise have been wanting for so long. She's scrappy and she can take care of herself and she has a set of skills that's grown from her life, from where she's come from. And her story doesn't start with a traumatic event. She isn't raped. Her whole family isn't murdered. She's just already where she is already able to take care of herself because she's been left on this planet. She knows what she wants. Yeah, and she isn't magically chosen. She makes the choice to leave the planet because she could stay. I mean, her life isn't great, but she's not being forced out. And it's so great to see someone make that choice and that someone to be a girl. One criticism I've been hearing about the film is that it kind of just rehashes some of the best plot points from the original trilogy, which is true. I mean, there's a giant space station that's gonna blow shit up, sure, whatever. But I'm really only hearing this as a complaint from guys. Hmm. This is not a Spider's gay org situation, though. <laughs> like, it's been like 50 guys. And I haven't heard it from any women. Every woman that I talk to just loves this movie. And we start just like kind of like drooling and frothing about it together. <laughs> and I think it comes down to Ray. I think it comes down to the fact that we haven't, we haven't been Luke Skywalker. We just haven't, you know, and these guys have, and they're like, I've seen this before. I'm, I'm done with this, but I'm like, just wait, it's not your turn right now. <laughs> I know that's really hard for you, but it's not your turn right now. We haven't seen someone pick up the lightsaber yeah. and start using it. I like. I'm gonna cry thinking about it right now. It's yeah. it's really powerful. She's funny and she's hopeful and she's angry and sad, but she has this like amazing hope to her. My favorite Ray moment was not fighting, but uh, her uh, very human moment of no, look at where I'm pointing that one. No. That one. No, nope. <laughs> look at my where I'm. No, no, nope. because nope. that's just such a like so universal real. feeling. I've I've been that person pointing, and I've been the person pointed to. Yes, and not knowing yes. what you're I looking can't at. See I, can't, I can't. I don't have the same line of vision. No, I'm on a different axis. Yeah, their costume is utilitarian and functional in the place where she's from, like this desert, but it is also extremely feminine. It isn't. Like, there isn't this dichotomy of either she's a sex pot or she's, like, sexless. It's still very clear that yeah. she's a girl. You know, nobody's trying to make her into a yeah. strong female character boy. Mm -hmm. But she's not overtly sexualized. That's mm -hmm. great. I feel like the Skywalker theory is, like, maybe the prevailing theory that she's somehow a Skywalker. 
And I, it's a little midichlorian focused for me. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This idea of there being a single family, a single bloodline in the entire galaxy that everything revolves the, around. The force flows through every living thing. I, I always it's not like have, a dominant allele of force. <laughs> no. Hood. No, I always have a real problem with there being something biological that makes someone special. Yeah. Something inherent that makes a certain group of people special. Anytime that's in a movie, I always sort of, my hackles get raised. The, so The thing that kind of like gives me hope that maybe they're not doing that is the fact that Kylo's story is so about feeling that he should be biologically special and doesn't feel special enough. Mm -hmm. like, what if Rey's just Rey? It gives us this idea that it could be any of us. Mm -hmm. Any of us have the potential power inside of us. We just have to embrace it. Yeah, because Luke appears to be just some random guy on a moisture farm. When you find out his backstory and that he does come from this lineage, and then the prequel movies and everything like do the work of digging into why he used Luke Skywalker and why he gets to be the one to go on the journey, you kind of lose that sense of, you know, we could all be Luke. Yeah. Um, but Every we man. <laughs> we still, girls, I mean, and boys too, still have the sense of we could all be Rey. I'm going to say that Rey is important for boys. Boys need more awesome girls to identify with. It helps build them as empathetic beings. Supply Read, elect, army. supply with an army. We've decided to do um, fan theories, fan Ray's theories. origins. <laughs> I'm gonna say I want to read Ray Kenobi. Um, I don't know why I think that, but I agree. She has some good ideas, probably. Yeah, yeah. She or knows. she's like the most intellectual yeah. of the bunch. Kenobi ben certainly Kenobi. had the best hair. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, beard care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. I guess we should elect. Ray Skywalker, so we can impeach her if she gets <laughs> yeah like. Also, too you know, something in addition to being force sensitive that the Skywalkers inherit is like this ability to govern. Padme style. Yeah. Padme and Leia style. Yeah. Maybe like if oh, Kylo oh, Ren oh. inherits the like Anakin the, tendencies, the whiny. then Ray can inherit yeah. Padme's yeah. leadership style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which means we're giving an army to the scavenger. And I feel that's right. I feel like she knows what to do. With she an definitely army. Yeah. does. Yeah. She knows what to do by herself. Yeah. So with an army, she could surpass all expectations. She could save China. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.